Loving greetings and pranams. God bless you all. I'm happy to be with you again. Although the week went by so quickly, isn't it? It's hard to believe that we're already one week from when I had the great joy of being with you last time. I want to begin just by asking you all, if you don't mind, was I right? Are you, are you different people now than we met last Sunday? Well, I have a few messages and uh, it's very encouraging. First from email from two devotees in Encinitas who came midweek, wrote midweek, and they said, from where we sit in Encinitas, the metamorphosis is going well. Another one from Hyderabad in India he wrote, as you said, after convocation, you won't be you. I've realized it already, though I am attending convocation for the first time. And another beautiful comment from Hawaii. I felt my home transform over these past four days into a space hallowed by the mantle of convocation such as we feel descend over the Bonaventure and Biltmore hotels during our usual summer gatherings. And last one for now, from Mumbai in India, we are all floating in the love and joy of God and Guru, and you will surely meet our transformed selves during your closing satsang. Well, new friends, new versions of old dear friends, it's a joy to make your acquaintance. You know, I think um, this may be the first time I've ever given an after dinner speech at nine o'clock in the morning. And I say that because it feels like we have just finished a very filling, a completely satisfying, lavish banquet, isn't it? A feast of divine wisdom, joy, inspiration, and life-transforming truth. So I, I sit here at the end of this week and I, I ask myself and I ask all of you, what could there possibly be left to say? Well, usually on the last day of convocation, um, traditionally, the class is, is titled something like, um, Taking Convocation Home With You. Well, we don't have to worry about that this year because you're already there, but I thought I would just mention a few ways for us to extend the experience so that it doesn't end today. If I had to summarize what we, we all hope that you'll take with you at the end of this week, I think it would consist of five essential skills, five how to live skills, five yoga skills that Guru Dave has presented, has offered to all of you during the past week of, of gathering. Number one, how to meditate, how to meditate. And really that brings the rest of these five skills. That's the foundation. Second, I would say how to live a balanced life. And what does that mean? It means becoming better, at skillfully using the soul's instruments of the body, mind, and emotions, instead of letting them use you. You know, it's the, the key there is, is to always remember, I have a body, I have a mind, but I am a soul. 
Third, I think, to take with us in the going forward from convocation, third skill, how to become your best self, how to become your best self, expressing in action, expressing in the way we behave those divine qualities of the soul. And going on, fourth of the skills, how to form a personal relationship with God. How to form a personal relationship with God. And that, of course, includes having a deeper understanding of the guru-disciple relationship. And then last, I would say, tying them all together, these skills that Convocation has opened up before us. Last one is how to live so that at the end of your life, you will be satisfied that you have succeeded in fulfilling the purpose for which you were born in this incarnation. So I'm not, I don't mean by this that there were necessarily was a class that had a title of each of those five. For some there was, some there was. But what I mean is that these are the important themes woven throughout all the classes, a little bit here, a little bit there, one speaker covering it in one way, another speaker in a different way. And one thing that uh, I think devotees are always interested to hear about convocation is, you know, our speakers don't compare notes with each other ahead of time. They don't know in advance what the other speakers are going to say. But every year, and I think I felt, especially this year, it seemed to me, that our gooder works behind the scenes to orchestrate the, all those individual talks into a beautiful synergy that is way, way more than the sum of the parts. One that speaks personally, I'm confident, and uniquely to the needs of each person attending. That's the magic of convocation. And I know that because not only many past years of experiencing that and watching that happen with devotees who come to convocation, but also from the many messages and letters and um, outreaching that have poured into to the Mother Center during this week. So this convocation, of course, is unique in many ways. And I don't mean just in the fact that it reached thousands more people than ever before. But I would say especially because the classes, kirtans, meditations, the pilgrimage tours, and so on, this year, they're not just fleeting experiences. In other words, in one ear and out the other, so to speak. They'll be available online for you to revisit again and again and again. So, as we come to the close of convocation, I suggest one good thing to do is make yourself a, a checklist. Ask yourself what you gained this week to progress with each of those skills that I mentioned, or anything else that particularly impressed itself on you that seemed to say, yes, that has my name on it. And if you need more help or more time with any of these points or any of these skills, then watch the videos, watch the classes again, or as I always say, dive ever more deeply into the SRF lessons. You know, many times during this week, it came to my mind something that our Guru said about his talks, about his lessons, his writings, all of the many ways he has poured out his divine wisdom, his love for our awakening and liberation and including certainly these convocation talks. He said, I will show you the way again and again until you get it. 
I will show you the way again and again until you get it. Let me tell you a little story. When, uh, when our guru went back to India in 1935, he, in Calcutta, he visited one of the ashrams of the Ramakrishna order of monks. And one of our SRF monks met somebody who was present on that occasion. And this person recalled that when Guruji, when Paramahansaji came into that room, he said all he saw was a tremendous light, a light that radiated the most incredible joy. That's how he saw our master. And there was a kirtan going on in the room, and Gurudev began chanting to Divine Mother again and again, just Ma, Ma, Ki Jai, Ma, Ki Jai. Victory to Divine Mother, victory to Divine Mother, over and over. He was, he was dancing in ecstasy, they said, tears just streaming down his cheeks for two hours. And when the time came to leave, he was in such ecstasy that he couldn't even walk and he had to be helped out to the car. Each of us can have that ecstasy. Each of us can have that joy because he promised, I will show you the way again and again until you get it. A few days ago, a devotee wrote this to me about one of the kirtans that had uh, happened during this week's convocation. And this person says this, I had such an incredible image during the monk's kirtan while they were playing Govinda Jai Jai, Gopala Jai Jai. I could see everyone in the astral, all the great ones and all my friends from church and other friends and relatives, all dancing and smiling in the astral. And everyone on earth from every country, religion, race, smiling and moving to the chant. Govinda Jai Jai, Gopala Jai Jai. My heart was exploding with joy. Isn't that beautiful? And you know how happy that would make our master, Paramahansaji, because then he went on to say, I have not come to sermonize but to give you realization, to strike fire in your hearts, to blaze the flame of devotion. I speak what I feel of the infinite God and the joy of all souls I feel dancing within me. So it's very clear to me that not only this devotee who wrote, but countless others of you all around the world tuned into that. The joy of all souls I feel dancing within me. And beyond all doubt, I want you to know that today, all this week, he feels the joy. He feels the gratitude of all of you, which has grown and unfolded and gotten deeper and sweeter, more intoxicating day by day during this blessed week of convocation. And then Gurji concluded those remarks and he said this, so beautiful. He said, someday I shall wash my hands of everything connected with this mortal body that I may be free and say, no more am I teaching. I am everything. And that omnipresent joy and love. That's what's touched us all this week. Hold on to it. Don't let it go. There's a little story I wanted to share with you that's particularly meaningful for, for this convocation. And um, 
This was uh, told to me by our dear brother Paramananda, who many of you know from many past convocations, always behind the scenes, coordinating the convocations. And let me just mention, this year, 2020, the convocation, this is actually the 50th, 50th anniversary of Brother Paramananda's coordinating convocation. He's been instrumental in every convocation from 1970, including this one. So all of you from around the world, old timers from past convocations and, and um, everyone joining us for the first time, let's give him our thanks and gratitude. So anyways, Brother Paramananda uh, told this story. He, he said uh, during the convocations from the Bonaventure Hotel that um, different times during the week, he would call our beloved president at the time, Marinalini Mata, just to give her uh, news about the convocation, tell her what was going on down at the hotel, and uh, just little stories and so on. And he said, in 2013, seven years ago, during one of those calls, she said this to him. She said, Parmananda, the key to SRF's growth will be the new lessons. And then she said something very poignant. She said, once they are completed and distributed, Master will bring convocation to the world. You know, that prediction from 2013, we see that manifesting. We see how that has come true during this beautiful week. You know, not only, as I mentioned, the attendance, many, many times greater than any previous convocation. We have participants from 117 different countries all around the world. Tens of thousands have been joining in on the classes and the different events, the kirtans and the meditations and so on. And just as I said, beautiful letters, beautiful messages from all over the world. Australia, Germany, Brazil, Guatemala, Malaysia, Suriname, New Zealand, all over Europe, all over the USA, and really most places in between. And I want to just share one more from that uh, came. This one came from India. Devotee wrote, I had planned to come to this convocation for the first time with my husband, although I had attended convocation alone thrice before. Every time I received the amazing inspiration in those previous convocations, I would deeply miss my family, and I always wished I could bring them along. Well, this time I was so overjoyed that the convocation <clears throat> itself came to my entire family. The teen class was attended by my godchildren. <clears throat> my parents <clears throat> participated in the talks and meditations. My husband and I could see the inspiring pilgrimages together. During the convocation, the entire family could come together every evening after the kids completed their online schooling to attend the wonderful kirtans and meditations. We celebrated Janmashtami together as a family. Not just my own family, but with our large, united family of the world. Isn't that beautiful? Doesn't that sum up the significance and the, the wonderful benefits, the wonderful blessings of this week of convocation. And as I said, many, many other messages, emails, letters, um, comments left on our social media sites, thousands and thousands of you. Let me just take a moment right now to thank each one of you who has reached out and communicated. Thank you for your letters. Thank you for your messages. God bless you all, each one. And let me take a moment also during this closing to give a very special thanks to all of you who contributed in financial way, who generously gave donations so that we could make this event free to all. 
We couldn't have done it without you. And I, I give you heart's thanks for your help and support. And now, also, I want to say a word about the devotees who serve. You know, in addition to our monks and nuns and regular employees, Convocation always, always has depended on hundreds of wonderful, tireless, sweet, and willing lay members. So this time, this first online convocation, this year, it went to a whole new level. When, uh, when it became clear earlier this year, not that long ago really, that we were not going to be able to, uh, to schedule the um, in-person event, then uh, planning, when the planning started, our um, wonderful convocation team got together with our SRF website team and outreach and our IT department here at the Mother Center. And very quickly, the help of Guruji's amazing volunteers from all over the world came forth in every way needed. This has been truly unique. I, I think you'll enjoy hearing just a little bit of this behind the scenes. You know, the, um, the, our, our convocation team planned the basic event and uh, the basic structure of the, uh, what was going to be needed to present that online. But then there were the, the pilgrimage tours to the different ashram centers, so important, such a, a wonderful part of convocation. Those videos were created by a very talented group of our lay members, who most of whom work in the film industry. They film for several days at each of the locations at Mother Center here, at Lake Shrine, Encinitas, Hollywood, and with several movie cameras, a big crew, a 360 degree camera, and it was a massive undertaking. And all of it had to be completed, editing, compiling, final production in less than two months. And you know, they even, as you've seen on the website, they even made a separate video teaching us all how to access the features in that 360 degree um, photo tour. So be sure and watch that if you need help. And then another thing that, again, volunteers from all over the world, that was the subtitles for our classes. First, they took the classes and created the English subtitles for the pre-recorded classes. And then once the English classes were done, then another team of volunteers translated them into all the other languages, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, German, Japanese, so that devotees from all over the world could join us for this special centennial convocation. And that work is continuing. You know, some of the classes like this one today and many of the other ones that uh, were presented live during the week, that, uh, that translation and subtitling team is, is hard, hard at work. So for those of you who prefer one of the other languages, come back and as soon as they can get it done, you'll be able to see that in the other languages. And then another thing, you know, our many of you devotees have come to convocation again and again. You know what it's all about. You, you know the drill and the layout and how to navigate around the hotel. But for this online convocation, we were, we were all newcomers, weren't we? We were all really beginners at it. And uh, thank goodness, you know, we had this wonderful online help desk. 120 volunteers. They were around the clock available, providing technical support to individual devotees through live chat, through phone calls, and in Spanish, English, Portuguese, again, Italian, German, and, all, and many of the major Indian languages. All of this came together to make this an, what the event, the event, very special event that it was. Then we had several wonderful SRF and YSS members who are successful professionals in the tech industry. And they came and offered their services and worked tirelessly. And by tirelessly, I mean sometimes all night to provide with our own IT department and website department to provide the best possible online convocation experience for all of you. 
And lastly, I, I want to give a special pranam and thank you to our, as I said in the beginning, our quote unquote normal convocation volunteers that over all the years that have served so faithfully, you know, the, the men and women in the blue suits and the blue, uh, the blue dresses and, and white shirts that are always there whenever you need them at the hotel. And they have been also participating behind the scenes, providing their experience, providing their guidance, and also to begin planning how we can integrate now this online experience with the in-person experience when we're able to go back to have that. So please, I know you join me. Let's give them all a huge, huge vote of thanks. And also, I want to give a special thank you to this talented, dedicated group of lay members who over the last year have formed the group called Yogananda Seva. They coordinated many of the services that I just listed, many of the, the, uh, the different aspects of making convocation work this year. And I'm deeply grateful, deeply grateful to those devotees of Yogananda Seva. You know, I, I, I mentioned um, sometime before that um, when I was asked to become president in 2017, I felt, I felt very strongly that there were certain goals, certain um, priorities that God and Guru were strongly implanting in my, in my mind, in my heart. And one of them was this, and this is, we see the unfolding of this particularly during this past year and particularly during this past week. And that was to tap more fully into the vast pool of lay member talent and expertise to utilize this amazing resource in advancing master's mission. That vast pool of lay member talent and expertise that our guru surely has handpicked and formed from all around the world. So one of the first steps that we took toward fulfilling this priority, this expanded lay disciple initiative that was so dear to my heart and remains so, was starting this Yogananda Seva. Over this past year, this, uh, I call it a virtual community, this virtual community of devotees from all around the world. They have banded together using the 21st century technology that's available to us. And they have served our Guru's work in so many ways. And I want to talk a little bit more about this in a moment. But for now, I especially want to acknowledge that we could not have made convocation so wonderful, such a wonderful online experience this year without their help. So, looking ahead, looking ahead to the months that remain during this wonderful 100th anniversary year of Self-Realization Fellowship, I'd like to share just a few other things for you now that we're all together. And now that this convocation, centennial convocation, is drawing to a close. And here's the first one. As I have mentioned many times, said many times, our guru, our master, was a visionary. He was so farsighted. And he, he frequently spoke of the need for both monastic disciples and lay disciples to participate, to participate actively in the growth of his work and the spread of his teachings. Gurji devoted much time during the final years of his life to the formation of a vehicle or a structure through which Kriyaban members of SRF and YSS worldwide could actively participate in the growth and progress of his work in a very special way. Therefore, to honor our blessed Guru as part of this centennial celebration, in a couple of months, we will be officially inaugurating a new 
SRF YSS Voluntary League of Lay Disciples to advance his mission for the spiritual upliftment of our awakening global civilization. Now, as many of you know, some of you may know, for many years, a wonderful lay disciple group has been active at our Hollywood temple, as well as at our other temples. And that one, the one at Hollywood was begun at Paramahansa Yogananda's personal request. And he gave directions for its organization personally to his close disciple, Miramata. And that, my friends, that was the forerunner, the pioneer of what we will now be inaugurating worldwide. So this voluntary league of lay disciples, it's going to be a lay disciple order formed of Kriyaban members of Paramahansa Yogananda who feel in their hearts the wish to make a commitment to number one, to structuring their daily lives around the spiritual ideals of the sadhana that he gave, and second, to give freely of their time and resources to serve and support his work. This is going to be an active, organized program to offer spiritual opportunities to devoted members of SRF and YSS. It will build on and expand the tradition and the work of these smaller but very potent, very powerful lay disciple groups that exist at our temples, in other areas of SRF, in our youth programs, in our translation areas, in the wonderful employees who are working at our ashrams, working at the Mother Center, all of these wonderful lay disciples who have already been playing such a fantastic and inspiring role in Guruji's work. Now we want to expand that out. So, as I mentioned, some of the longtime members from our lay disciple order, a lay disciple group, have already begun organizing. And that's, those are the ones that formed this Yogananda Seva, which I spoke about a minute ago, to take on projects to help our gurus work with my support and my guidance. So if you haven't already visited their website, you can do so at yoganandaseva.org. And I mention this as one example. This is one example of the kind of thing that this voluntary league of lay disciples, as envisioned by Gurudev, will energize. There will be many more examples, many more in addition to the existing lay disciple groups that have thrived at Hollywood and the other temples for so many years. So I wanted just to give you a little hint of what is to come. And a little bit later this fall, I want to present this in more detail to all of you. And uh, sometime this fall, we're going to have a new publication available for you. It's a handbook for members of the SRF YSS Voluntary League of Lay Disciples. And it will give you all the details about how to join, how to participate, everything. The whole focus is on how to deepen your discipleship how to deepen your discipleship, your sense of connection with and love for our blessed Guru and Param Gurus. I think you'll find it inspiring. And we'll send out an email newsletter when this is ready for you. So, moving to another, uh, another bit of um, development that I want to share with you. Most of you, I hope, and in fact I know, have been enjoying the new edition of the SRF YSS lessons over the past year or so since they were launched. And um, I recall, and uh, you know, I'm, I, I had the blessing of um, helping in a few little ways with Marilini Mata, whose project this was. And I remember her saying that when Paramahansaji was working with her many, many years ago, decades ago, on the new edition of these lessons. One of the requirements that he gave her was this. The new lessons should provide followers of this path with a continuous stream of inspiration throughout their lives. A continuous stream of inspiration throughout their lives. That's what Gurji wanted to give 
to all of you. So I want you to know that in a few weeks, we're going to release the next phase of this program. So can we, uh, can we show on screen? I want to show you. First, uh, there you see the blue one. This will be, um, this is an example of our new uh, supplement lesson series that uh, these are going to be available by subscription, one lesson every two weeks to those who have finished receiving the, the basic series. You see this one, uh, they pick up, you know, there were 18 in the basic series. They pick up where that left off. This is lesson 20, the divine potentials of mind and willpower. And um, this will be uh, launched uh, in September, just a few weeks from now. So please check our, uh, our website and member portal and more details will be, will be provided at that time. And then later, again, later this year, you see the orange one on the, on the right side of the screen. This is an example of the advanced lessons. This one, it says advanced lesson number one, the hidden truths in St. John's Revelation. So again, lots to look forward to. I just, again, that we're all here together during this wonderful week. I wanted to give you a, a glimpse, a, a quote, sneak preview of what you have to look forward to. And then also let me mention that um, these wonderful new lessons in, in the various different languages, many different language versions are in progress. And um, we'll share updates about you with you uh, later as, as, this, as it gets closer. But just know for sure that in all the different languages for those that don't speak English, um, our translation teams are working really hard to get those in your hands. And then um, one last thing I want to mention, and this is a letter that I received uh, just a, a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks before convocation. This was from um, a devotee in Texas, and uh, it was referring to the fact that um, our, our youth program for the, the young, the children and young teens uh, had to be canceled this year because of the uh, pandemic situation. And this devotee uh, wrote a, a, a very, um, very, it touched my heart. It touched my heart. And it said, she said this, she said, both my husband and I are high school teachers. Brother Chenananda, SRF delivers online messages to many, mostly for an adult audience, which is great, but no one is really reaching out online to the upcoming generation who are the next in line to enter the real world soon. We hear you. We hear you. And yes, we're working on this. And we hope to have more for these children and young people in the coming year. In fact, very soon, sometime this fall, we plan to have a special online program for boys and girls. And then with more online and non-online programs for young devotees in the coming months and in the years ahead. Isn't it exciting to look ahead as think about it as we begin the next 100 years of Self-Realization Fellowship? And as I said in the opening program a week ago, it's just heart thrilling to see the dawning of a higher age that Paramahansa Yogananda and his teachings will help to usher in for all of us and for the entire world family. You know, in one of the classes this week, it was the one on Tuesday from our brother Satyananda, it talked about how we can live ahead of our time. We don't have to wait. We don't have to wait for the world to catch up. We don't have to wait for the world to slowly evolve into a higher age. We can live in that higher age right now. We can live in that higher age right now. Another little story about our beloved Sri Dayamata. You know, throughout this convocation, 
And I know those of you who have come year after year, participated, that uh, the presence, the blessings, the encouragement are be of our beloved Ma, Sri Dayamataji, has been so tangible and so present. And also with our other previous president, Sri Marinalini Mata. We felt them. I feel how deeply they are participating in blessing each one of you. But anyways, to go back to the story, one time some years ago, many years ago now, Dayamataji was, was meeting with a few of the monks and uh, talking about various things about the work. And in the course of the conversation, it turned toward the impact that the SRF work was having and would continue to have upon the world. And during that conversation, Ma paused and her consciousness went in. She was reminiscing clearly. And she said, um, one time when she was with our guru, when she, when she was with Paramahansaji, and he was talking about his line of gurus. And in such sweet humility, he said this. He said, self-realization fellowship is the archway through which glimmerings of the golden age are passing through. Self-realization fellowship is the archway through which glimmerings of the golden age are passing through. We don't have to wait. We don't, we felt that this week, didn't we? It's almost like not only living in a higher age, it feels like living in a higher world, a higher plane of existence. Again, hold on to that. Take it with you. Deepen it. Another time, our Guru said this. He said, liberated masters carry halos of invisible healing light. Wherever they go, they scatter the light of prosperity and health. And of course, we can add the light of divine consciousness, awakening and blessing all who reverently come into their presence. I can't tell you, my dear friends, what a joy it's been that during this week that all of us have been continuously immersed in that divine light, in that divine power, in those uplifting blessings of the SRF and YSS gurus. So before we conclude, can we take just a few minutes together? Let's take a few moments together in meditation to again deeply absorb that light so we can take it with us into the days and the weeks ahead. Please sit up in meditation posture. Close the eyes. And think deeply of each of these wonderful blessed gurus, each one in turn. Visualize their smiling, joyous, radiant presence in your heart and in the spiritual eye. Jesus Christ, Bhagavan Sri Krishna, Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mahashai, Swami Sri Yukteswarji, our Guru Paramahansa Yoganandaji. Visualize their presence, feel their smile in your heart, in your spiritual eye. Jesus, Krishna, Babaji, Lahiri Mahashai, Sri Yukteswarji, Paramahansa Yoganandaji, Guru Dev. Feel that you are bathed in that light of their loving and healing benedictions.
Now remaining in the meditation posture with eyes closed and uplifted. Visualize that divine presence, that divine light, and feel it filling your whole body, filling your mind, and upwelling that just lifts your consciousness, that lifts all the boats of your thoughts into that higher realm of bliss, of love, of divine assurance. Now take that light within the spine and brain, the altar of God perception. Feel that light flowing into your spine. Into the spine and now up the spine. At each of the spinal centers, Feel that light, feel that divine presence, that blessing. Feel it awakening the spine as we chant Om, going up the spine, starting at the coccyx center at the base of the spine. Chant Om, Om at the coccyx center. Then moving up the spine, Om at the sacral center. Om at the lumbar center. Om at the heart center. Om at the cervical center. Om in the medulla. And Om in the Kutesta Christ Consciousness Center at the point between the eyebrows. Feeling expansion, feeling that upliftment of consciousness. Now from that light at the Kutasta, at the Christ Consciousness Center, back down the spine. Om at the medulla. Om at the cervical center. Om in the heart center. Om in the lumbar center. Om in the sacral center. Om at the coccyx center, base of the spine. Now up the spine once more. Om at the coccyx center. Om at the sacral center. Om at the lumbar center. Om at the heart center. Om at the cervical center in the throat. Om in the medulla at the base of the skull, back of the brain. And Om at the Kutasta, the Christ Consciousness Center. All those spinal centers are awakening in that divine touch, that divine benediction. of our great gurus.
beloved ones. My prayer is that we let those awakened spinal centers be an unshakable connection between our consciousness and the all-pervading, all-protecting divine consciousness. Meditate each day, morning and evening. Go deep. Keep that connection alive. You know, God may be invisible to our mortal eyes, <clears throat> our physical eyes, but God, the Spirit, is always perceptible by our finer, awakened spiritual instruments of, of perception. That's what this Kriya Yoga science of meditation brings to each one of us. So let us allow that presence of the eternal right within us, always accessible by us. Let that presence of the eternal be our anchor, our refuge of security in this ever-changing world of Maya in this tumultuous panorama of delusion. Hold on to that light. Hold on to that presence. Guruji said, a steady stream of divine power will flow to you, for the Great Ones sent me here. When I am gone, you will realize this truth with greater impact. I am here only to deliver their message, and little by little, a spiritual change will come to the true followers of this path, and their influence will spread over the, over the world. Self-realization is one of the greatest spiritual movements ever sent to help mankind. It has been blessed by the Great Ones. Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mahashai, and Sri Yukteswar, in communion with Christ and Krishna. The grace of these masters is not gone from this earth. They are waiting to help you and to help the world. No doubt most of us, I pray all of us, have very much felt that help this week. Helping us and helping the world, as Guruji said. You agree? Raise your hands. That help that's been there in our lives in a stronger, in a more tangible, renewed way, and also that help reaching out in a very intangible way but very real way to help the world at large. Take that help with you. Take that help with you. Nurture it. Deepen it. Make it your own. Well, it's hard to come to the end, isn't it? Maybe, uh, maybe I should have asked that um, all those dear monks and nuns who, who greeted you in the many languages at the beginning of the week, maybe we should have them come back and say goodbye to you in all those languages. But you know, we have a saying in the ashram, there are no goodbyes in this divine family of souls. So we'll simply say this, until we meet again, until we meet again, Pranams, blessings, and God be with you. Now please, let's close our eyes again. 
for our closing prayer. Pray with me, beloved God, bless me. In my house, with thine own hands, light the lamp of thy love. Fill my body, my mind, and soul with thy love, with thy liberating wisdom. Change my darkness to thy light. Change my darkness to thy light. Touch me but once and I will change. Touch me but once and I will change. In my body, mind, heart and soul, light thy resurrecting lamp. Light thy resurrecting lamp. The blazing but humble light of divine realization the light of God-realization, the light of self-realization. And now we'll hear from our Guru Paramahansa Yogananda, who will have the last word in this centennial anniversary convocation. God bless you all, Jai Guru. Please play the recording. Heavenly Father, Jesus, Krishna, Babaji, Lahari Mahasaya, Sri Ji, Guru Preceptor, Saints of all religions, I bow to you all. May thy love Shine forever on the sanctuary of my devotion. May I be able to awaken thy love in all true hearts. Oh.